Okay, it's time for another life cycle video. I'm trying to whiteboard again, but with a better whiteboard. So we'll see how this goes. Okay, first, fungi have a, some new terms, some new words that I'm going to write them out and I'm also gonna write them in an order. Uh, so here I go. So first one is class. Okay, and this, you'll, you'll get it a little bit more here, but just know that this is basically two cells that have joined together into one larger cell, and their contents are still basically separate, okay? Particularly their haploid nuclei are separate. So it's like we got two friends, and they're like this. Okay, cell, cell, nucleus, nucleus, and they do this thing. And now, we're like this. And I will be drawing sections of hyphae like this. Okay, so this to this, from here to here, this plus this equals this, that is this. Okay. Then, There's this, karyogamy. Okay, and that is when this happens. We've got these two haploid nuclei. They join, and then they form this. Okay, and so something to recognize is that right here, the ploidy is N and the ploidy is N. Does that mean this is 2N? No, that means this is n plus n. So after plasmogamy, the ploidy is n plus n. Before, pl pl uh, before it is n by itself, it's haploid. Only after karyogamy happens, then you have a diploid cell. And from here, then, meiosis happens. So then, after this meiosis occurs, we develop we have spores usually, uh, or mononucleate haploid hyphae, or however. Like I said, we're not gonna get into that. Fungi, you will learn, really don't follow the same rules as animals and plants when it comes to mating, mating types. And we're not even really gonna get into that. We're just gonna follow the ends. We're gonna follow the ploidy, okay? And we're gonna follow it with plasmogamy, karyogamy, and then words you're used to, meiosis and Okay? That was important for me to go over before we get started. Okay, we're going to start with basidiomycota. Uh, the word basidium means club, and you'll see why. There's a structure called a basidium, uh, and you'll, you'll see. But it's always hard to know where to start drawing one of these life cycles because they're a circle. But I'm actually going to start in two opposite corners. First, I'm going to start with something that's familiar. Okay, basidiomycota is your typical, when you think of most mushrooms, okay, button mushrooms, oyster mushrooms, when you use that neat fly agaric that's red with the spots that probably inspired Santa. Um, you know, this is your basidiomycota. And basidiocarp, Basidio and then carp meaning body or so. In the horticulture terms, if you watch my other video, fruiting body, but in botany terms, basidia carp, okay? And when we talk about ascomycota in a minute, that's an ascocarp. Okay, so we're gonna start here. Here's the mushroom, okay? Um, how detailed should I get with? Do, do I want to talk about how this is the pileus? Do I want to talk about how it opens and forms from something like this and breaks and then we've got an annulus and a vulva? Do we want to talk about all that? Um, hmm, that's a good question. Um, it would, I, yeah, I, I'm not sure because it's not like super important for the life cycle. Yeah, but they're really good, good terms. You know, this is the stipe. Yeah. Okay, I'll do it. 
Yeah, it might as well. I think it will be useful. You know what? I'm just going to leave that in the video. You got to see that process. Yeah, yeah. So, so this is the stipe or stock, okay? And what happens, how these typically, not always, there's a few different ways to form, but for this model organism, the fly here, how that they're going to form is a little egg looking thing comes up on there, okay? And inside this egg is actually the primordial little mushroom, okay? And as it opens, okay, there's a little film that tears. And we end up where we've got something right here, a little skirt, and then some, some more of the skirt down at the bottom. And this skirt is actually used to be covering the entire top. These little dots, it's part of that covering, okay? So this is called the pileus, pileus, okay, the cap. The stalk is called the stipe, okay? Um, this, because it goes around, is, I'm gonna make sure I spell it right, Okay, annulus, and then this, the bottom part that's just right off the ground and is a little tore up, is called the vulva. Okay, and again, that's from as this comes out of the ground like a little egg and breaks out, all right, the little white dots on the top of the fly agaric or the, this mushroom, they're actually pieces of that little skin that the leftover of this stipe, and, or excuse me, this annulus. And, and Okay, I'm gonna erase this, and when you see me back here, we're gonna go go over it. Okay, drawing another mushroom. Oh, and then under that are gills. Not everything has gills, there are pores, which are like little dots. Think bovids, think those big shelf mushrooms. But a lot of them are those gills, and Basidium, or the Basidium mycota has gills, they have pores. It's not limited there. Okay, so we got our mushroom back. Okay, mushroom, basidium, basidiocarp. All right, and I'm actually gonna then come back here to the bottom corner, and these are basidiospores, okay? These are, and they are haploid, and they are spores that have been created by something that we'll get to, okay? And those spores germinate Right, and they do, they've got these tendrils and they're hyphae. And why am I drawing lines across them? Why am I spending the time? Because each one of these little lines is a division. These are cells that grow, I won't say on top of each other, but they grow and each one of them has its own haploid nuclei. So we're still in here. Okay, and actually then, I'll switch over here, we've got these long hyphae, okay, and groups of hyphae coming together form something called mycelium, which other videos will make more sense. And for this particular one, it doesn't matter, but you'll see why this matters at a different type. But say we've got mating type one and mating type two, okay? And these mating types will then meet okay and we're right here we've met up these meet each other okay and this is still in and then remember that plasmogamy it happens in here and suddenly instead of a single nucleus there are Red here. This will help. We've got a black and a red, black and a red, black and a red, a black and a red. So we are two n right here. Nope. <laughs> See, I almost did it. We are n plus n. We're not two n. We're not two n until karyotomy happens. Okay. So then, <clears throat> these right here, I'm looking at my picture because I want to be so sure I, I don't miss the little step. Because what happens is these actually are going to initiate this, where we've got our, our mushroom, okay? Our fruiting little mushroom. And then inside these gills, we've got 
something called a basidium. And they look kind of like a club at the end, okay? And there's something that happens here. Like, right, we've got, we've got this N plus N. And then right here, karyogamy happens. And we have a 2N basidium. Oh, my drawing is terrible. Is this being hard to follow? I think it's mixed. Oh, okay. Yeah, go for it. Okay, so we've got, that's not a club, that's a circle. We've got this club shaped structure, this basidium, and it now has a nucleus and it can undergo meiosis. And then what happens is it's divided into N haploid nucleate cells. And what is important is on our club, we've got these little stands, okay? And it's on these little stands that are now, let me back up. If it was like this right here, where there was N plus N, why couldn't they just separate and then go out into spores later? And the reason is because it's through this karyogamy that genetic combination happens, okay? And, and so it's sexual reproduction because of this right here. And so then meiosis happens like in sexual reproduction and refer back to bio 1610 and how the separation of the genetic material and assortment and things like that. And so then what we end up with are spore, basidiospores that are genetically unique, okay? And I'm just drawing them different colors next to each other so that you can see that these spores are N, like these. And then they come off of the basidium and they are starting this process over again. This is sexual reproduction because of this karyogamy that happens right here, okay? And so inside the, the, the gills, we've got this dikaryotic, that's what this is called, N plus N, dikaryotic. We've got this basidium that forms with these dikaryotic, that is dikaryotic. Karyogamy occurs, those form a diploid nucleus. Meiosis inside that occurs, and then these basidium spores are formed uh, on these, um, make sure I spell it right. Okay, these are called sterigma. One thing about my bad drawing is that you have your book that has a beautiful illustration, but I'm creating these videos to walk you through because I think it will. Okay, we're going to do zygomycota, and zygomycota is fairly different than it's, if we just look at it stepwise, it's visually going to look a little bit more like ascomycota, but it's pretty different from both of them. Uh, like ascomycota, there is this uh, sort of separate asexual loop at the top. Uh, anyway, so, so we've got, like with some plants, although nothing like with plants, but the words are the same, there's going to be a stolon and they call these rhizoids, okay? But again, just think of this very similar to that hyphal fungal material, okay? And we're gonna have little structures that look like this, okay? And this is called a sporangium. And in fact, the Here's the thing. I have to look because I get it confused. This right here 
is the sporangia four. Sporangia four. The sort of stalk that's holding this up. This is the sporangium. All right, and what's going to happen here is essentially these can break open and release these spores, okay? And these spores then germinate back into the same sort of, what do they, well, I call it a rhizome, or is it a rhizome? Stolen and rhizoids. Stolen is easy, that's, that's a botanical term. Rhizoids is similar, and I, I always get this confused with, with the aspermicota. Okay, so this is the asexual loop, okay? Now, what will happen is that there are multiple mating types here. All right, and so these two types, okay, so we've got one, the blacks are doing this, and the blues are doing this too, you know, uh, two and, and one. And so what can happen is these structures will be, will form when the rhizoids are close from these two separate mating types, right? And, all right, sorry about this. Okay, you started? Uh, yeah, it's gone, yeah. Uh, all right, so I, I erased everything because I realized it's gonna take more space. Okay, but we've got these two, that's way big, but that's okay. We've got these two structures and they're gonna sort of begin to touch. Okay, and these have N, this guy is N. And this right here is called a pro gametangia, which that name will make sense here in a second because then a gametangia of uh, forms where they're essentially joined. And we've got the plasmogamy happening. So that's N plus N, because now in this gametangia, we've got that situation where we've got N plus N. They're still haploid nuclei, but they're in this same cell. Okay, so this is now the gametangia. Okay, and then from there, it's a video, so you can pause it. Uh, and then from there, we have A just make sure I spell it right. Oh yeah. A zygosporangium. And you'll kind of realize this sporangium is referring to this 2N because what's happened is that gametangia from the last guy underwent karyogamy. And we've now formed this 2N nucleus, little guy called the zygosporangium. And the zygosporangium can then, 
say we've got a zygospore engine here, how this sort of ties back into everything, is our zygospore engine can then form the, the asexual reproduction structure and the sporangium, the, yes, the sporangium, and from the sporangium, uh, we've got our individual spores that then will go back to that very beginning and can either go through asexual reproduction or can uh, form into these other structures and that then do this sexual reproduction. It's kind of confusing. In some ways, I think it's easier to see everything all in one place in your book, but I did want to walk you through that you've got these two mating types that form this pro-gametangia and then the gametangia and how karyogamy takes place and those two different mating types join into one cell that are sharing that N plus N, their nuclei that are haploid or floating around in there. Then they form into a gametangia, karyogamy, takes place, so then it's got the 2N, and then this zygosporangium forms, and really when you see sporangium, you know that that means something that produces spores, and with fungi, you're gonna see that these spores, these little structures are, are what happens. Um, oh, I missed a step, because meiosis has to take place inside here, so that then when the sporangiophore puts out spores, they are haploid. Okay, now we're gonna talk about ascomycota. And why do we care about ascomycota? Well, one, it has no less than three of my favorite edible mushrooms. Morels, uh, there's some sort of cup type of fungi. Uh, and woodier type of mushrooms, and drogas. They're all ascomycota. Now, morels, if you haven't had them, you're totally missing out. Anyways, I digress. So, again, this is a group of fungi that have an asexual loop that's specifically drawn on the top, and then a sexual loop on the bottom. So, for this asexual part, we've just got a mature hyphae, okay? And essentially, this, at the end of its hyphae, forms a spore, an ascospore, that then germinates into its own hyphae, and this process continues, and everything in here is N. Okay, this is the asexual reproduction. Okay, I'm gonna erase now. Okay, so we've got our little line here, our little hyphae, okay, and it's N. And what's going to happen is some structures are going to form next to each other, okay? So something called an antheridium. will form. Just drawing this. And then next to that antheridium, make sure I spell Ascogonium. And then something called a trigogyne. Trigo. G Y N E. Okay. And this stuff right here is setting the stage for the, the same types of reproduction that we've talked about. Okay. And so what'll happen, let's draw our arrows. So then what happen again, we've got, we've got our um, two different strains or mating types or, or our two different 
ends, basically, are two different haploid nuclei in these separate spaces. And what will happen is that trichogyne is going to join with the antheridium. And then, it, if you look in your little book, it kind of looks like a stomach. But essentially, you've got a joined set of structures. And what I want you to pay attention to is that there are now these haploid nuclei, haploid nuclei in both sides all together because what's happened, that's right, plasmogamy. Okay, where now they share the same cell, but there's still N plus N nuclei in there. Okay. And then, I'm out of space. Okay, I'm going to erase. Okay, see, this, this has some specific words, all right? And essentially, you've got this guy right here that forms an Aska genus, Aska gynus thing, why? Nope. Back up, Aska genus. Hyphae. And that's going to contain N plus N types of structures. Okay, I'm back. Um, so again, here we are, N plus N. And this is going to form into an ASCO genus hook or crozier, a little structure that essentially has a little hook on it and is part of the hyphae, okay? And this, it's while in this stage, that now karyogamy occurs. And you've got still the same structure Okay, this, uh, this hook, Crozier. And now it's that 2N diploid structure. And from here, you, you guessed it, meiosis happens. And then something kind of unique happens, unique to ask of my code. Okay. And it's the formation of an ascus. And essentially there is this long structure. And at first there are four places where, no, okay, so we talked about meiosis having occurred, an ascus forms, four of the one type of excuse me, the one mating type kind of form in this ascus. And then actually the, yeah, then the ascus elongates to an, an eight nucleate stage where you've got two, three, four, one, two, three, four, apparently the rodents are crowded. And then from here is where these open up, these spores, leave and then those germinate forming into hyphae so in this verse you have these free spores and then each of these spores can then germinate and start that process over again uh, with reproduction mm -hmm.